Welcome to our first online service, in my memory, at Orient Congregational United Church of Christ in New York. As we prepare to worship in our homes, I invite you to take a moment and make a sacred space for you and your family. Perhaps a candle, a seashell, a stone, whatever speaks to your heart. Items that you could use to focus on during our times of silence together and more so. If you'd like, you could hit pause and gather some things together. Now you're going to notice this morning that the flow of our service will be different. I've taken out the responsive prayers and we'll pray together several unison prayers. I am thankful for the Orient leadership and their decision to worship for the time being online. Our hope is for everyone to remain safe in this challenging time of the coronavirus and the flu. We want everyone to be safe. So let us now take a breath and worship together. And join me in the prayer of the day. And if you're alone, I know sometimes we're not used to our own voices. So I invite you to be courageous and say the prayer with us. And if you're not comfortable reading along, it's just fine also. And perhaps if you're with your family, it's a time that you can hear each other's voices out of the many voices we generally hear. So now please pray with me. Oh God, help us to use this season of Lent to examine our attachments and to sense where you invite us to live more simply and deeply. Shine the light of your love into the private corners of our lives where we have acquired so much clutter that it's begun to restrict our freedom. Grant us the strength to free ourselves from appetites and needs that drive us into taking, having, and wanting more than we need or have time for. Teach us that in letting go, we become free rather than deprived, generous rather than covetedness, and spacious rather than restricted. In your son's name we pray, amen. And this prayer was written by Anne Sidel. At this time in our service, we do what we call sharing with the young at heart. On the journey together, our Lenten theme is, is our Lenten theme this year. So I wanted to take some time and do a meditation on Psalm 95, which is one which is the psalm reading for today in the lectionary. I invite you to take a moment and continue to breathe. Settle back in your chairs. Maybe focus on the sacred space you have set up. During this time, I invite you to be gentle with yourself, to breathe in and breathe out at your own speed and depth, and to listen to the images the psalmist paints for God's children. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and the dry land which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Take a few more breaths and consider the words you just heard. What did you hear? If you're alone, you can say the images to yourself. And if you're with friend, family or friends, you, you're invited to share the images that spoke to you. For me in this time we are living in right now, it was a little interesting to me that the word that popped out, the first word was, or words were joyful noise. Yes, we can be joyful 
because our joy comes from God. It just surprised me that that was the first one that I heard. And then songs of praise. And finally, we belong to God. The children of Israel faced many challenges in their lives and the psalmist encouraged them to look toward their God who created the heavens and the earth, who during all of our lives walks with us on this journey. Let us continue in a time of silent prayer, inviting God to join us in the silence. We're gonna take just a few moments and then go into our pastoral prayer and the Lord's prayer. God, we sit with our hearts that are many things, open, broken, fearful, and hopeful. We ask you to hear our prayers and that we can rest in your love and your power. We pray for those that are in danger of being isolated live struggling with what to do to care for others and ourselves. God, we ask you for your help. For those struggling with the unknown and with others that are affected by the coronavirus and flu. God, we ask you for your guidance as we walk in this world. And let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his followers so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in, it is actually responsive prayer or prayer on number 306, and we'll speak it as a unison prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, incline thy ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. And God, even though we are separated from each other physically, we thank you for receiving our gifts, the phone calls and letters we might send to each other, and for the offerings that we send to the church. And to give us the wisdom to know the right places for the money that we receive. Amen. So today's gospel reading is from John 4. Most people know the story as the woman at the well. It's a long story and perhaps during the day or this week, you can take some time and read it and read the entire story. It tells of several groups of people seeking, though most didn't know it, healing and quenching of their thirst. I decided to share the beginning of the story and I invite you to once again, settle back, get comfortable and listen to the voices. Again, we're not following the usual way or flow, but it is a new way for today. John four. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. 
The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Hmm. Jews do not share things in common with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who, who is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. May God bless the hearing and the listening to the sacred text. So, there is often more than one way to get anywhere in life. So true in this morning's story. Jesus and his disciples were trying to get from Judea to Galilee. And they had a choice of how to get there. But isn't that true in all of our lives? We always have choices. To quote Dr. Philip W. McLarty, one takes you up the Jordan River Valley. It's soft and flat. The other takes you through Samaria. It's rocky and mountainous. And to borrow a line from Frost, Jesus took the road less traveled. Well, I believe Jesus knew what he was doing. He chose to follow the path less traveled with his disciples. And by doing so, lives were changed and people's thirst were quenched. By the time Jesus made it to Sitkar, he was thirsty, hot, and tired. His disciples went looking for food and left Jesus alone. Now, I was thinking, but how when they got back, they were shocked. The NRSV version says they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? I think they knew better at this point in their journey together with Jesus to even say such a thing out loud. But it still bothered them. So going back to the interaction between the woman at the well and Jesus, the interaction in itself was a big deal. The culture of the times was such that men and women didn't interact with each other. And for Jesus, who was Jewish, and the woman, who was Samaritan, they positively did not interact. And yet, on this day, they did. And both people ended up with their needs met. Jesus, who needed physical water, and the woman who needed living water that Jesus provided. And in this time of different, like Jesus at the well, we need to be there for each other. And what that means is looking different than it did a week ago or even a few hours ago. And as we have explored before together, each of us are at a different place in our lives and we walk with God at different paces and different ways. Perhaps for you, it's calling a neighbor or a congregate and checking in and saying, hey, for others, it might be writing a card or letter. And maybe letter writing will become a thing again. For some, it's always been. I remember I was on a caring ministry team. And one woman who would faithfully write out birthday cards, get well cards, and she would bring them to our meetings and each one of us sign that card. Over time, the feedback we would get was that those cards were something they cherished. We can be that drink of water for others that are dying of thirst. And we can do this even as we worship apart. We can pray, we can talk, we can be as Jesus has called us, the light of the world and to follow his example to be there for each other. Let us pray. 
Loving God, we come to you and ask us to open our eyes to the needs around us, to guide us and encourage us. And God, we are thankful you are on this journey with us. Amen. And I want to leave you with this benediction today. I found this in one of the prayer books. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Wish everyone to have a blessed and peaceful day today.